Hello guys. This was supposed to come out a good month ago, but when I was building this, I lost motivation because I got stuck on a room and then I kept switching everything up. But let me give you the whole basis of what's going on in this build. So this is a starter home. Believe it or not, from the thumbnail, it probably looks nothing like the starter home. Well, first, the reason I'm rebuilding this, if you've been watching me for the past year or so when I started uploading again, I did a starter home renovation and I completely forgot about it until one day I was checking my Snapchat and something I do a lot is I'll take pictures on my phone through snapchat of a build and then i'll write in the text box future noel did you finish this and then i'll get the one year flashback and then i'll see a build and i'm like oh shoot i never finished that and then i'm like oh i did finish that so i got one last year i'll put a picture on the screen one was an ice cream shop and i didn't do that but ironically the one year ago today of that video was when i just posted the ice cream shop with annex and isaac about two three weeks ago so i was like okay i made past me proud even though it was a year later and then i also saw the one where i did a starter home renovation and i was looking at the picture it looked nothing like my style does now i feel like i've evolved a lot as a blocks builder within the past year i've kind of went more towards basic shapes and structural where last year i kind of did more i don't know just like default items and not really anything of that because i was scared it was uncharted territory i know i can do a lot better this year with the build so we're gonna try it again so usually the baseline when i do a starter home renovation is to keep the structure of the house which means not deleting any of the outside walls i was gonna keep the layout of the inside too but when i originally started the first draft of this build i just could not make it work. The rooms were just too big and it was too open concept for what I was trying to do. I had the kitchen in the same spot and the living room in the same spot because I was trying to make it to scale perfect exact but it just didn't work. So we went back to the drawing board and we started again. Isaac did help me with the exterior. Thank you so much. We literally started building this a good month ago but I got so backtracked because I just couldn't get the motivation to finish it because for me when I start a big project and then I look at one room and I can't figure out what to do I'm just burnt out and I just move on I start a different build. But then I was like I really don't want to scrap this build because the exterior is beautiful and there's gardening we had this elevated porch style and we used decals for the fencing gardening all that stuff we really sweated out there was a lot of effort into this and i made custom siding <laughs> As of recently, a lot of my builds have been pretty neutral. Well, not neutral, but in my standards of neutral. Cool tone, muted pink, and muted blue. I was looking at some of my thumbnails on my channel as of recently, and I was like, dang, it's too neutral up in here. Like, the colors are just dead. Because when I look back a year ago to my old builds, they were super, super vibrant, and I kind of lost that little sense track. I needed to bring back some color. As you all know, I am a Pinterest girly. I live, laugh, breathe, inhale Pinterest. And I found these really cool geometric-styled interiors where there's a lot of arches and circles and shapes sort of so that's what i did i redid the entire layout most of it's still the same just a few grids off but that's okay definitely a brighter color scheme i was trying to be a little risky here get out of my comfort zone and it worked really well so i was very happy about that anyway a little break from build talk today i want to try a new thing where people ask me questions and i'll try to answer them in the video i keep getting a lot of comments asking about how did you know you wanted to do architecture as a career field for school and college how did blocksburg shape your interest to go to school for architecture so i'm gonna give you guys a little backstory on how all this happened so if you are considering doing architecture or something of that sort these are some signs to look for so my senior year which was two three years ago i had genuinely no idea what i wanted to go to college for because when i was in high school we had this career day and we had people come in and this guy was an architect and he came in and he told everyone he's like don't be an architect this is the worst job ever you're overworked underpaid you never have free time you have to move blah blah, blah. like he discouraged us so bad and i was like uh uh, so I shouldn't go into architecture. That was horrible. Why are you coming in on career day to tell me to not do your job? Like, okay, that's your own bias, but man, that's so mean. So I had no idea what I wanted to do. Obviously, in the back of my mind, I did know what I wanted to do. I just didn't realize it at the time. So let me take you back to the very beginning of my life. As a little kid, I had a very big passion for fashion, and I still do, and also decorating. So I would constantly be rearranging my room and just moving furniture around and redecorating it as much as I could at like the age of six. Once I a dresser literally fell on me when I was trying to move it. I just wanted to change my room up. And then eventually my dad got an iPad. And this was the epiphany of my life. Because at the time I was really into reading books. I wanted to be an author. So I started writing stuff. But then my dad got an iPad. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to play some iPad games because I get the Apple app store now. And I found this game. I don't remember the name of it, but it was an interior design game. You decorate interiors of houses and whatnot. So I started doing that and I was really, really into it. And I just love decorating. And I think if you like fashion, that kind of translates too because i don't know they're both creative so i would always play that game i also had this fashion design kit where i would make clothes and whatnot my two favorite games were either ones where you dress up and make outfits if you guys know what 
it fashion is. Oh my god, love that game. I used to play it religiously. Or I think it was called High School Life or something. It's a lifestyle game where you kind of do quests and then change your character and make outfits and then you build a high school campus sort of thing. So I used to play that and then I also played the design game. Then eventually, a few years later, as I got older, I started getting into Minecraft. And Minecraft, huge, huge opportunity. It's literally unit block scale, so you can build literally anything. At the time, I watched a lot of popular MMOs and gaming with Jen. And Jen had this house. It was a big wooden house with a big pink heart in the middle. So I tried to recreate that. This is off topic, but I used to watch It's Funny and Ashley Ossidy, and she had a house too in Bloxburg. They both played Bloxburg, and I recreated those because I loved it. But that's that's further in the future. Let me go back. When I would play Minecraft with my friends, because in eighth grade, my class, we had this Minecraft server we'd all play on. I would literally be building everyone's bases because I just, I love building. It was my favorite thing to do ever. And people would also pay me to build their house with in-game currency. And this just kind of kept going. Like all through my life, I would be playing in Minecraft realms, Minecraft servers. All I do is build. I would have my friends do all the hunting and the mining. They'd give me the materials and then I'd build everyone's houses. Funny as it is, I used to watch Minecraft speed builds too. So there was always just this underlying theme of designing, building. And now obviously my favorite part was interiors. I'll show you guys some of my builds. Then later I got out of Minecraft a little bit and I got into Bloxburg. I also used to play Rose Citizens and Meep City, but I didn't know what I wanted to do as a job because everyone kept telling me, oh, architecture's so bad. Like it's so hard. You're, you're gonna die if you do it. Like, ah, shut up. I was so passionate about building and stuff that at nighttime I'd get random ideas. I would take out my notebook at like one o'clock in the morning on a school night and just start sketching interior designs and layouts just because I had a really good idea. I was like, oh my God, I want to use this for a YouTube video. Cause at this time I did start doing YouTube. I think that was when I kind of realized this is something I would love to do for the rest of my life. Even when I wasn't playing a game, I would be outside the house. I would see a pretty house. I'd take a picture and it was just really random things that just made me feel so connected to architecture and the urban world of design. But the thing is, architecture is such a broad subject, you kind of have to pick a concentration. I mean, you don't have to, but I did because I'm very passionate about specific parts. Like, I'm not big on exteriors, as you guys know, or the design of bridges, which is civil engineering. There's so many different sectors. So I went to meet with my college advisor when I was a senior in high school. When I told him I like designing and decorating, he said I should do interior design. But the thing is, my school unfortunately doesn't have an interior design sector. I told him what else I like, which was city design and walkable cities and all that sustainability stuff and he was like oh you'd be perfect for urban planning and environmental design and i was like oh that's really cool and then he told me if i want to cover all my bases so if i wanted to become an interior designer to just get a master's and a minor in architecture which means i'll be a licensed architect but i also have a concentration in something else so i could do interior design i could do urban planning or any type of branch of architecture which to me that was perfect because if i get bored with one i could switch to another i'll have all the options so that's what i did right now i am in urban planning and environmental environmental design major and I'm minoring in architecture itself. I'm doing the minor and the master. So this way, when I finish my undergraduate school, I can finish grad school faster. Because for me, my main concern was I want to do interior design, but I also want to do urban planning. I'll pretty much be free to do whatever I want. So I covered all the bases there. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to be going into my third year of college this coming August. And I love the classes I take. They're so interesting and so much fun. Oh my God. I nerd out so bad when I talk to people about it. And they're probably not even interested because they're not in the degree that I'm in or whatever. So they're just like, why are you telling me about the history of this city while we're on vacation? I do that stuff, guys. And anytime I'm in a car with someone and I see a six lane road, oh, I get angry. But if you're considering anything in the architecture field, 100% do it. And also talk to an advisor before you go into college and pick a major because they will help you so much with the right path. Before I went into college, I didn't even know urban planning and environmental design was even a sector or a degree to get. So they'll show you all the options, which was really helpful for me. Back to the build for a little bit. I really wanted to do a floral theme for this house since I think summer is upon us. Although the weather where I live has been freaking crazy. It's snowing one day, then it's hot, then it's cold, then it's raining. We're in that time period of, I don't know, the year where it's weird and fluctuated, but I bought so many skirts, bro, for summer because I'm trying to be a fashion icon in the sun and I can't wear them yet because it's cold. And the thing is my school ends in about a month. I have an exam a month from today. So I can't even wear my cute outfits to school because school's gonna be done by the time it's hot outside. 
aside. Whatever. When I went on my cruise, this is another story I forgot to tell. As you all know, I planned all my outfits. I wanted to make sure I got the best pictures possible because if I'm gonna wear a good outfit, guys, I need to document it. It needs to be remembered in history. I'm building my own archive of looks for my future children to look at and they could be like, wow, my mom was a baddie. But the thing is, if you're gonna take pictures on a cruise, there's a lot of people around, right? And let me tell you, I used to have bad social anxiety. Oh my God, I faced my demons. It was so freeing. Back in high school when COVID happened, I was really insecure. I had really bad acne and then I went on Accutane. I was at a really low point in my life. I hated high school. So if you hate high school, I completely understand. I sympathize with you. College is so much better. It's so much more fun. I would literally count the hours from when I got out of school to when I had to go back to school. That's how much I hated it. And I think because I hated it and I didn't really have, I had friends, but they weren't friends that I felt matched me personally because in high school, everyone has cliques, you know? I came to this school late. I went to a different school and then transferred. So everyone kind of already had groups formed. And that's what I hate about high school is like, once you're in a group, you're stuck. So I was stuck with this friend group all through high school and they were okay. Like they were, they were fine. My personality wasn't the same as theirs. So I didn't really feel connected or have any connection with them. And I just felt really alone all through high school. And I think because of this, I didn't go out or anything or have any social interaction because I just didn't feel like I belonged. I felt like I belonged more with my discord friends and all that. So I stayed home a lot. And then mind you, the pandemic hit. So we got stuck home with quarantine blah, blah blah so i was just on my computer all the time it was great i had the best time of my life in high school when i was home because i freaking hated it after covid happened i kind of developed really bad social anxiety because i wasn't used to going out a lot i would go to the store or a restaurant and i just didn't want to order because i was just so scared of that confrontation and talking to people so i would literally have my mom or my dad order for me because i just didn't want to deal with it it stressed me out and it gave me so much bad anxiety so if you deal with this now you are not alone trust me i was there and i'm not gonna lie to you guys the way i got over it is literally literally exposure therapy. When people tell you you have to do something you're afraid of to get over it, that's literally the truth. And it's it's hard to hear, but it's generally what works. When I ended up finishing high school and I went to college, I was just thinking in my head, I don't want to repeat what happened in high school. College is so much bigger. Like my school has, I don't know, like 30,000 kids compared to a school that had like 500. So there's a huge, big opportunity to meet a bunch of people. So I was in my head like, I need to put myself out there. I need to get rid of my fear of being afraid to talk to people. And I need to stop thinking so much into conversation conversations and I would always try to predict what to say before I see someone because I was just that anxious and scared about interactions and stuff so I got to college and we had this orientation weekend and I was like I'm putting myself out there so I just started doing it and it's the saying fake it till you make it is so true because once you just like show that you're outgoing and bubbly and you just talk to people it just becomes natural at that point and then you just feel so much better and then eventually you're not faking it you actually look forward to hanging out with people and then you're not afraid to order so for me it was just like the little things I would always just start up random conversations with people like you got to be confident i see a lot of people in school they do this or just in public when they feel awkward they'll just go on their phone to kind of feel this comfort of not being judged or whatever but like just turn to the person next to you and start talking to them this was my exposure therapy i literally forced myself to become extroverted and social i'm so glad i did because now i'm really not afraid to go up to anyone and just say something or start a conversation the whole point of this is when i went on my cruise i wanted good pictures and i have this super bright light some people call it the Alex Earl light or something. You probably seen it on TikTok. It's a super bright LED light you clip onto your phone. It literally gives you really good pictures. But obviously, people are gonna stare at you if you have a big light uh, connected to your phone taking pictures. But here's the thing, right? My friend told me this, and it has stuck with me forever. When you're scared to present in school a presentation, you shouldn't be scared because one, no one's actually paying attention because everyone's so conscious of what they're doing. They're not actually judging you or care. And also, I don't remember anyone's presentation at all ever in my life, so they're not gonna remember yours. So realistically. It does not even matter. Like, just do what you want. And I knew this when I was on my cruise. I was like, I'm never gonna see any of these people again. They don't know who I am. So why should I care what they think? So I was like, let's go, girl. So my siblings held up my light. I trained them. I was like, guys, we are facing our demons. We are going to take good pictures. So in front of like 500 people in this big outside area on my cruise, I turn on my big light. I'll literally show you guys a video. Okay. You guys can walk through it. People were staring at me, but I did not care. And I got really bomb pictures. And honestly, it gives you more confidence when you face kind of that embarrassment or worry. People are staring at me, yeah, but they know I look good. My outfit is good. I'm taking bomb pictures. They wish they had the audacity I do to take a picture like that. I used to have friends where they just didn't want to take pictures. And they were like, ew, I don't want to do that, blah, blah. But now I have friends where we take pictures and I'm like, oh yeah, strike this pose, do this, do this. Oh, slay. Like, it really depends on the people you're around too. I'm telling you, like, when you're not afraid to do things, Life is so much better. 
I've made a lot more friends now, and I have so many more funny stories to share. So if you're ever scared of someone judging you, realistically, no one's gonna remember. I don't think anyone on that cruise is thinking back and is thinking, oh my god, that girl with the big light, what was she doing? That's so weird. They're probably just like, that's a little strange. She's very dedicated. She must be an influencer. And then they walk away and they go on with their life. All you gotta do to get over that fear is just keep doing it until you're not scared anymore. And my Instagram feed is popping now. So, hey, take the five seconds of embarrassment for a nice lifetime of good Instagram photos. Anyway, another off-topic thing. I'm going to a lot of concerts. This summer, I've booked it. I want to go to so many things because I want a lot of fun experiences, aka I want to buy outfits to dress up for. So, I'm going to a concert and maybe this is just a me thing, but when I go to a concert, I like to know all the songs because I just have a better experience because screaming the lyrics is so fun. So, what I do before concerts is I'll literally look up the set list and then I'll memorize all the song lyrics or just play them a lot where I kind of remember them. So this way when I go to the concert, I'm prepared and I know all the songs because I just, I think it's better when you do. It's more fun. I did this last year when I went to Five Seconds of Summer. The concert was in August and I knew about it because I bought tickets in March. So from March to August, I literally just practiced all the songs. And then by the time the concert came, I knew all the lyrics and it was just so much more fun because I was just screaming the lyrics, having a great time. So I'm trying to do that right now. I'm going to Madison Beer soon and I know all her songs already because she's like my number one. So I'm so excited to go to that concert. The only issue though is I got floor tickets. So everyone's gonna be on the same level. So I bought tall platform boots to wear. So this way I'm tall enough to see her. Except my friend's coming with me and she's like 5'2". So I kind of feel bad. I don't know if she's gonna be able to see or not, but we're gonna hope for the best. And a lot of people get there a good seven hours early to get in the front. Listen, I love Madison Beer, but I will not be standing outside seven hours before a concert. I'll get there like an hour before. And then I'll hope for the best because realistically the floor is like a mosh pit. I'm gonna be clubbing, clubbing at a concert. It'll be fun. And I planned my outfit for that back in January. Do I have a problem? Yes. Shopping problem is better than drugs. I don't think I've ever had a renovation turn out this well in such a long time. I say this literally every build. This has gotta be one of my favorite builds ever. I really detailed it a lot this time because if you're gonna do a starter home renovation, you gotta do it right. So we have flowers and decal flowers all lined across the front and there's an elevated porch too. So kind of upscales the house a bit more. Also, the trees are custom decals too. It's just the perfect little log cabin starter home type of theme. And it's perfect for spring. That was the whole goal. I wanted to do something super vibrant. So let's go inside. We have a bow carpet. I'm gonna link all the decals I used in the description. So if you wanna use them too. But here's the front entrance. If you remember how it looked before versus now, it's so much prettier and everything's super botanical. We have a floral decal up here, floral vases. Everything's just pink and pretty. Even the carpets, I did custom decal carpets because I really wanted to tie in the whole spring summer so yeah this is the front entryway there's a table so you could sit do your homework there's also cups and tea so you can chill out have a nice cup of tea with a friend i did add flowers on the light fixture to give more of that spring vibe i don't know i've seen in builds hanging flowers coming down from the ceiling and it just looked really pretty so i wanted to recreate that in blocksburg and then as you enter as this was before this was the living room but then we turned it into this kitchen space since it just made more sense it flowed better with the arches so i really detailed the kitchen a lot i think with this color scheme you kind of have to it makes it look better with all the colors popping out at you i framed the kitchen by adding these light strips to frame the centerpiece here and then this fridge is kind of pushed into the wall so there's this color accent here all these counters are custom they're just basic shapes with stripes structural and then i made a custom bar sitting area too with another custom carpet it just looks so nice and i totally forgot these existed so i added them in the build so this is a separate area from the kitchen but it's also included and then if you turn around this used to be the kitchen but then we turned it into this living space area here and then following the theme of these light fixtures i was really feeling them in this build i never used them but i was deciding to go out of my comfort zone a bit and i wanted to try a bunch of items that i don't typically use i also did wood paneling on the top i think that's what it's called we also have this custom shelf with a tv and then i put a decal over it to make it fit more with the theme because the blocksburg channels are really aesthetically pleasing to put on and just assortments of random stuff more flowers everything's very floral spring oriented I did the same with this laptop desk area we use decals to bring it all together originally this was also part of the kitchen that's why i switched the areas because it just was more optimal to put the living room in an office here and then the kitchen over there it's so pretty and i love all the contrasting colors it's not overpowering but they all complement each other in such a nice way and then this couch i was trying to do a lot of geometric stuff so i decided to do this triangle couch design which is just 
structural and then a basic shape of a triangle put together. Since this is just a one bedroom house, you don't really need a bedroom door. So I did this middle section area here where we have the closet, where the original closet was just really cluttered and basic, but now you have an open closet. And then there's the rooms of the bathroom. And then this is the bedroom. The bedroom before was so empty. It didn't really have much detail to it. So I decided to do the detail myself. We added some spring cherry blossom color scheme in here since the main theme of the house was pink. So I made it really, really pink in here. And then over here, this was not in the original build, but I made my own multi-purpose bunk bed up here with a working ladder. So there's two beds now. So you can either sleep up here on the top bunk or you could sleep on the bed down here. And then this is a little espresso coffee desk. So if you're reading a book, doing homework, whatnot, this would be the ideal spot. So if you share a room with your sibling, you know, someone could be hanging out on the bed. The other person could be doing stuff here. So it just really works. I wanted to utilize all the space as much as I could. I don't like anything blank. Blank walls make me very angry. And I did this floor design to have a connection to the different rooms. So there's a flow. So this is the bedroom and then it transitions into the bathroom. And then here's the bathroom. Very pink. I got this pattern off Pinterest and then I just duplicated it and made it really small to make it look like shower tiles. Here's another archway display of the bathroom with this little hamper. Just a ton of patterns and then a simple shower. I didn't do much detail up in here because the walls were pretty detailed so I wanted to balance it out. There's just so many fine little details you can really get into if you look at it, but overall, I love this build so much. I wish I could live in this in real life. It's just so cozy, and it has the perfect amount of open concept, but also close together, where it's just so flowing. I love it. The value is 365k, which honestly makes sense. There was a lot of little details. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video and liked how the renovation turned out. If you have any other video ideas you want me to do for next week, because I'm kind of running low on ideas, just comment them below, let me know what you want, and... Yeah, I'll see you guys next week or next video. You know you love me. XOXO. XO. French Roses Girl.